Who is this Speed Saunders guy? Let's be real, you clicked on this because you want to know. This character's first debut was before your grandparents were even born. What's cooler is that he's related to a prominent member of the Justice League. Enough stalling, let's dive deep into the first detective of DC Comics. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Speed Saunders and his first three cases. Cyril Speed Saunders was a talented detective and the cousin of Shira Saunders. Who's Shira? The first hot girl, of course. Speed served in the FBI's River Patrol Division and acted as an adventurer and detective in the early DC Comics 30s to 40s era. In later comics, we learn that Speed belonged to the OSS, Office of Strategic Services. He met Wesley Dodds during this tenure and they became buddies for life. His OSS adventures include Included counter espionage operations throughout the Second World War. So, why are we talking about a certified classic character? Speed eventually resurfaced in 1999, and as such, he's relevant to our era now, especially in terms of appeal to Hot Girl fans. Alright, now let me talk about his first few adventures from the Detective Comic series. Speed's foray into the DC Comics. Cyril's first adventure starts rather quickly, with him receiving a call about a hot case. He's told about the multiple dead bodies found in the bay. He then sets out to investigate. Apparently, the victims were all Chinamen. Yeah, well, this is a comic from nearly a century ago. Anyway, Cyril makes it clear he works alone, and funny enough, nobody objects to it. Cyril goes around Chinatown searching for clues and later checks out the victims' bodies in the morgue. Yes, they're indeed people of Chinese descent. I found it very funny that this was something the writer felt like clarifying, although not precisely in terms acceptable for today's stints. Here comes another hilarious part. Speed then lives out in the docks near the bay for several weeks disguised as a dock worker. He notices an odd ship never really coming to shoreside, just rowing around, heading back and forth. He then proceeds to board the boat, only to be thrown out unceremoniously. A boat owner spots Speed returning ashore, and I kid you not, says, where in tarnation did you come from? Lucky for Speed, the owner agrees to rent his boat to him, and Speed follows the suspicious ship at dawn. He then finds a perfect moment to swim and sneak into the halted ship, taking out the unsuspecting guard. He quickly finds out that the mastermind was smuggling Chinese people and throwing out the sick ones. After taking out the operation's boss, he reports to the police chief. Speed, being the cool dude he is, takes a vacation instead of a raise or bonus offered to him. What happens next? Find out in the next issue. Speed's vacation. The waterfront is basically a front for all sorts of criminals, and it doesn't take too long for Speed to get involved in another adventure. He returns to the docks to find a boat for his vacation. Were boats really that commonplace for vacations back then? This guy seems to love boats. For what it's worth, all the criminals are seemingly here, so it works out in favor for the special operative of the River Police. Just as Speed rents a boat and heads for Connecticut, he's startled by a noise from the forward hold. There he finds a young woman who tells him she's hiding from a crook named Spider Liverman. Yes, you heard it right. It's hilarious that it's not even the weird part. The woman reveals that her brother was killed by Spider, who wanted the plans for a typewriter that her brother invented. For context in the present, imagine making a mechanical keyboard so good that the underworld is out to get you. Soon enough, they come across a speedboat which stops just before the two vessels collide. Spider hops out of the speedboat and into Speed's face, demanding to talk to the woman. After an altercation, Spider is thrown overboard and he and the woman are captured. Speed calls the men out as he finds a hole in the speedboat, causing it to drown at an alarming rate. The goons quickly set up a raft and leave the hero and the woman in haste. If they had waited a minute, they would have realized that Speed has a plan. Speed plugs the hole and drains out the water Water, taking control of the speedboat and now having the upper hand. He makes a deal with Spider about no gunplay, which backfires when Spider boards the vessel and almost knocks Speed out. Cyril wastes no time taking out the goons and assumes control of the situation again all by himself. Yet another success of our detective. An action-packed vacation was probably the last thing on Speed's mind when he decided to take up the vacation offer. Speed at it again. Island Edition. Does this guy love boats or what? Yet another adventure begins when he sets out to investigate the mysterious murder in San Jose. Get this, he gets the information from a newspaper. To be honest, we take the information we get today for granted. This man had to resort to a newspaper for his detective work. Anyway, he declares to the chief that he's taking up the case. He wishes to get down to the bottom of the mystery of a young Arthur Bell's murder. The chief finds it ridiculous once he's told that San Jose is somewhere south of Cuba. More 
Moreover, Speed wishes to take an airplane to San Jose, which makes sense since I can only imagine how long a ship would take to get there. Having sourced a personal biplane, he heads off into the skies. Yeah, having contacts is his real superpower. Onwards to Cuba, or rather San Jose. Once he gets there, Speed quickly realizes that this place is quite tricky to land a plane on, what with the lack of a runway. He lands the plane after finding a suitable patch of soil and is forced to drop an anchor once the plane refuses to stop. He hops out of the biplane and has a look around, heading towards the nearest town. Speed heads into town in the disguise of an old beggar and encounters a woman. He begins to ask some questions about the place. She reveals herself to be May Adams, a friend of Arthur, the plantation foreman, and the victim of a murder, Nick Del Borno. That's the name he learns from the young woman. Immediately after, he's confronted by Nick Del Borno and his men. Talk about a small island. The men get into a fight while May is captured, and unfortunately for Speed, a glass bottle on his head takes him out. When he wakes up, he finds himself in a bed, bandaged and resting. Strange man, a poor farmer, has been taking care of Speed as he recovers from his injury. The farmer warns Speed not to mess with Nick Del Borno, which could lead to severe consequences. Despite the warning, Speed gets up, asks for directions to Del Borno's place, and pays the farmer five pesos for the trouble he undertook. After a while, he finally reaches Padre Pesodo's mission building. When he he enters, he's greeted by a rather strange looking person who appears to be the Padre for the place. Speed offers to help the Padre in the kitchen, while the Padre goes to the other room to talk to Del Borno. Of course, Nick Del Borno wants to marry May, whom he captured a while ago. The Padre agrees. Speed brings the food and pours it all on Del Borno. As if that wasn't enough, he proceeds to seal the deal with a wedding present punch. After dodging a scarily accurate knife throw from the Padre, Speed leads May to relative safety upstairs. He then does a 180 and dives down the stairs to surprise his pursuers. After a brief fight, Speed comes out on top and holds a handgun against the men. The men quickly spill the tea about what happened. Nick Del Borno took out Arthur because Arthur's plantation was hurting Nick's. The Padre also turns out to be an imposter. He's not a priest, but rather an accomplice to Del Borno, providing Del Borno with a safe haven. Another big W for Speed. Well, you get the idea now. This is how his adventures go for the most part. He shows skill in aviation as well as marksmanship, not to mention hand to hand combat prowess. It's pretty cool to read these old comics and learn about a character relatively unknown these days. Before we talk about his relationship with Hot Girl, let's talk about his last adventure. The Last Adventure of Speed Saunders in Detective Comics By now, Speed is known as the Ace Investigator, and he has made quite a name for himself, both in his universe and ours. The story opens in Saul Adams' apartment. Let's get to it then. Adams receives a postalgram from someone named Nan. Nan's life is in danger, he says. Hold on, what's a postalgram? It's an Instagram DM back in the good old days, with paper, but transmitted through telephone wires, so it's much quicker than mail. Anyway, getting back to the story now, Saul rushes to Nan's place. He breaks open the door when there's no response from inside. But he's too late. Nan has been murdered. The bellboy's reaction is insane and noteworthy. You spot Nan's body. This guy says, golly gee whiz, murder, wow. And you thought the slang kids use nowadays sounded ridiculous. As expected, Speed Saunders arrives in the police precinct just in time to overhear the commotion over the murder. Gladly takes up the case and investigates the crime scene. A knife he finds lying about is the apparent murder weapon. Speed thinks poison could be the actual cause of murder. Knife is just a distraction. How does that affect the case? Don't ask me, I'm not a detective. He then comes across an ashtray and is surprised when Saul tells him she didn't smoke. I was surprised when Saul talked about how Nan never smoked despite being in danger most of the time. Yeah, the logic is beyond. Saul then elaborates on his statement. Nan was a stool pigeon, basically a police informant. She kept them informed about various underworld activities. Recently, she had been afraid of a man she had helped in arresting a while back, who was released a day ago. Obviously, Speed wants to know more about the gentleman. Saul tells him the crook's name is Silky Sam Sedgwick. Oh boy, criminals had some cool names back then, that's for sure. Silky Sam had threatened Nan before he was taken in. Speed immediately heads out to investigate this Silky Sam character based on what little he knows of him. Silky Sam was an ex-sailor and used to frequent a tavern Speed knew rather well. What do you know? He still does. Speed finds him in there and they talk. Speed realizes that the ex-sailor has no clue about Nan's murder. It seems apparent that the murder was an attempted framing since even the murder weapon was a sailor's rigging knife. Silky Sam then 
then lead Speed, and they find Gambling Gus, a pal of Nance. Speed gets a hold of the man before he exits the place and takes them back to the crime scene. Speed offers them a smoke, but both men refuse since they chew or prefer pipe instead. Clearing that suspicion, Speed puts the men on hold by the police and investigates Nan's apartment for traces of tobacco. He figures there must be more to the tobacco angle, but can't prove it yet. Adams asks to tag along, as he may be of help. Speed gets the ashtray and its contents tested out in a lab. He then later talks to Gus, who tells him how he figured Nan was murdered. He saw her from the fire escape. Nan had thrown him out of her place the other day, and she left instructions not to let him in, but Gus had to warn her about Silky Sam. He turns to Adams and Silky Sam, who deny being there during the day of her murder. After gathering all the proof, our ace investigator reveals the murderer, Adams himself. I know it is a bit anticlimactic, but it's because of these kinds of stories that this trope became popular and overplayed in the first place. Alright, let's finally talk about Hot Girl and Speed. Is he the family member of Hot Girl? In a DC Comics one-shot named Sensation Comics, Speed Saunders was revealed to be Shira Saunders' cousin. Shira Saunders was none other than the original Hot Girl. Kendra Saunders, the current Hot Girl, is Cyril's granddaughter. After his work during World War II, Speed eventually became an ally of the Justice Society of America. In the modern era, he finds his orphan granddaughter Kendra Saunders. He encouraged and even trained his granddaughter Kendra when he realized that Kendra was a reincarnation of the original Hot girl. Kendra was at high risk for suicide as a depressed 17 year old and consequently the original hot girl spirit had entered her body. These days, as an older adult, Speed occasionally helps hot girl and Hawkman on their adventures. Marvelous Verdict so there you have it, the story of Cyril Saunders, aka Speed, aka Ace Investigator. Did you like him? I personally like it when writers talked about non-powered individuals in a universe of amazing heroes and powers. It grounds the reader in a way since it makes the character much more relatable. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!